good morning and welcome. Man, I got up feeling old this morning. Felt, you know, there's some of you in here that are older than me and you have not properly prepared me. <laughs> my feet hurt, and some, of my, some of my joints hurt from time to time, and what was my chest fell. Praise God for my belt, otherwise it would further fall. Those of you who feel the same, raise your... No, don't. <laughs> oh, God is good. Last week we had Bishop Marungi here for Mother's Day. He brought a good message, yes? Yeah. Bring us up to date with the ministry in Africa. They're doing, they're doing awesome, really. Because they too have come through the suffering of... of uh, of COVID-itis and and the uh, issues that it brought to them, and and they're they're pushing through like we are. You know, we're going forward. We're going forward with whatever with whatever God desires for us. Amen. This week, I want to continue a two-part series that I started uh, two weeks ago in the book of of Ephesians. You can turn there if you'd like. Put your finger in chapter two. You brought your Bible with you. You should have your Bible with you. It is your reference. Amen. Stephen? Yeah. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. It was in Ephesians 2 where the Apostle Paul was reminding them of their past. Their past sins. Who they who they were, who they were in their past, and who they are now, who they have become because of Jesus Christ in their lives. Amen? Amen. Paul didn't want them to forget their past. Amen? He doesn't want us to forget our past. It's important that we remember who we were, what we have lived, what we've experienced. Instead, instead, Paul wants us to know that, that yes, we remember our past, we recognize our past, but it does not define who we are today. Why? Because we have been born again. We've received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We've been born again. We aren't that person. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you what, I look back and praise God, I'm not him. I'm not him. We're not her anymore. We're someone, we're someone new. Instead, he wants us to know that our past doesn't define us, and, and we're not going to allow our past, listen, to determine our future. Amen? It's not going to determine our future. It's not going to hinder our work. It's not going to hinder our ability to see God's fingerprints on our lives today. Amen? Amen. Anytime we handle something, the sheriffs and deputies will tell you, leave fingerprints. Well, God's fingerprints ought to be over everybody in this place today. They ought to be able to dust you and know who you belong to. Who's been messing with you? Huh? Who's had his hands on you? We good? Our past doesn't define us. Instead, we allow it to show what we are saved from. What we are saved from. Listen, if we don't recognize what we're saved from, what are you saved from? If you haven't left somewhere that you were, how can you be where you are now? Well, that's deep. Think about that. It shows us, our past shows us the depth and the richness of God's grace. It truly does. It truly does. His free gift. Ephesians 2, for by grace you've been saved through faith. Amen? And not not of yourselves. Not not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Amen? You know, the Bible tells us we're not saved by works. And Denny said, you know, my, my beautiful wife, she, I submit all my sermons to her. And she knows how to hit me where the bruise don't go. And she said, you know, last week you might have messed people up because you said there's nothing they can do for their salvation. And I said, because there's nothing. She said, well, they can receive Jesus. I said, yeah, but that's not a work. She said, well, I think it is a work. And I said, well, I don't think it's a work. 
Because if it's a work, the Bible lied to us because it says not by work. So what do I do with that? Well, I thought about that this morning as I was talking to Brother Rick. And I said, Rick, if you came and mowed my lawn and just said, praise God, it's a gift of God, love you, man, saw your lawn was long, I came and mowed it. And I received that gift from you. Did I do anything? The lawn is mowed. I didn't touch it, right? It had been prepared for me. Those are the works of God in my mind, that God has prepared the way and said, walk ye in it. So, yes, I make a choice. I make a choice to lay hold of the work that has been done on my behalf. Now, if we want to look at that, look at that choice as being a work, then go ahead and look at it that way, but I'm telling you this morning, I don't think it's a work. Not of works, lest anyone should boast, so don't you dare. That's why I entitled this series, But God. But God. <laughs> we read in Ephesians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus, in the ages to come. This is a developing knowledge that he's giving us. This is a knowledge of of not only our, our past, our, our present, but our future also, our eternal future. I remember saying that Paul gave us here in Ephesians 2 four evidences of God's work, because I'm talking about God's work, not our work, the work of God, that he gave us four evidences here, and one is God's work for us, God's work in us, that I spoke about two weeks ago, and today, God's work through us. God's work through us, and fourthly, God's work among us. Why? Why do I want to do this? Because I want us to be reminded that it's not us, that it's Him. And if you've surrendered your, your heart and your soul to Jesus Christ, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It's not yours anymore. It belongs to Christ. And even the decisions that we make in our lives should be made through Him. We are servants of God. My goodness, Pastor, you get emotional. Yeah, I am. So let's continue here in Ephesians 2, 10. We left off a couple of weeks ago. We're going to see God's work through us. Amen? Father God, let your work be done in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are what? His workmanship created, see, we, we have to be His creation. We have to remember we're created. Is that okay with everybody? You didn't drop out of the sky. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Can we imagine for a moment that before we were born, God decided that He knit us in our mother's womb with a future and a purpose and a hope. Good works already planned out. Good works that we will never do unless we're in Him. Good works that we will never achieve if we're not listening to orders from on high. If we're not walking in the work that he is already prepared. We good with that? If you're not, praise God, see me afterwards. Again. I'm going to read that from the Amplified, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. Man, we can stop there. Recreated. You've been recreated. 
in Christ Jesus. And that's a big word, amen? Recreated. Born anew. That we may do, that we may do. See, now we're permitted to do. That we may do. That we may do those good, good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. So we've got to be on a path that He, he wants us to walk in. He says He's a light to our path. There's no reason we can't find it. He says if you walk in that path, you'll, you'll find the works that I have prepared for you to walk in. But they're on my path. They're not on your path. They're not going to be of your choosing. They're going to be of my choosing. Wow, that makes God pretty important. That makes Him pretty important. Taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. We were born with a future, a purpose, and a hope that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. After what? After we have been born again. Receiving, receiving Christ isn't just some kind of a badge that we put on or, or a, a, a fire insurance that we slip into our back pocket because I don't want to want burn in hell, so yeah, I'll buy. No, it's, it's so much more than that. So much more than that. Think about it. Did, did, last week, were you thinking about the plan and the purposes of God for you? That week? You know, there's, there's a, um, I read an article, a lady, she wakes up in the morning and says, Good morning, sir. What is it I can do for you? Wow. Can you do that? What is it I can do for you? God's work through us. See, it's simply not, it's not simply salvation. It's being saved from our sins, absolutely, but from our sins unto something. See, often, what, what have you been saved from? What have you been saved from? Well, let me ask you this morning, what have you been saved unto? More than that, Mike, more than that. We've been saved unto those good works that He has prepared beforehand, that He's already made the way to. And unless we're walking in those, we're missing it. We've got to look at our lives and ask ourselves, where am I? Where is He? Am I going in the direction He desires me to go? Am I on the pathway that He's prepared for me? Am I doing the things that He is? My goodness, He prepared a work for me today. Are we watchful, mindful for what He has prepared for us? Because it's God's works, not ours. And we take no glory in them. Oh, you know what I did today? I found three homeless guys on the street. You know what I did? I went out and took them, took them out to lunch, bought them hamburger. Well, that's really good. What's the brag and what's the fact? God's work through us. God's planned pathways. God's planned works. God's planned purposes. Wow, say law. Think about that. Think about that when it doesn't look like a plan. Think about that when you think your ship's going down. Think about that when somebody torpedoed your bow. Nothing is going to stop the plan of God's life for you but you. You ain't going to blame the devil either. He's got no license to stop the works of God. He's got a license to stop you and speak to you. But you are the one who is going to connect with the devil or the Son of God. It's up to you. Wow. You may be thinking this morning, you know what? I don't think I'm all that impressive to the world. All not, not all that important to the world. But if you think that, I think it's because you didn't go home and look in the mirror like I asked you to. Because two weeks ago, I asked you to go home, look in the mirror, and see what God has done. I know if you did that or not. I think it's important. Otherwise, you would have seen with your own eyes the difference immediately. 
as you remembered who you were and who that is looking back at you today. Who is that person in the mirror? What has God done? I don't know. I don't, you know, we tend to look in the mirror and see all the bad stuff. The wrinkles, the lack of hair. I'm not as pretty as I think I should be. I'm not as handsome as I thought I was. What do we see? The eyes are the window of the soul. What do we see when we look in them? You think about looking in other people's eyes. What do we see when we look in our own eyes? The difference should be recognizable. Who you are in Christ. What He's done with you. With, as I look in the mirror and I remember my past, and I go, oh my gosh. You know, sometimes I, I find myself apologizing to God. Saying, Lord, if it took all that to get me here, I am so sorry. I'm grateful, I'm thankful, but I am so sorry. Look at, at a lifetime of walking in your blessings that was missed. Look at, at a young life that had the possibilities of doing predestined purpose for you that was lost because of foolishness, selfishness, self-centeredness. A young life lost, I'm telling you, a young life lost, wasted. And God looking back and saying, yeah, but I got you now. I've got you now. But if it took all that, how sorry I am. Let's not forget that. Who was I in the beginning? I know that the world says, I know what the world says about Christians. You guys are inconsistent, a bunch of hypocrites. I know what they say. I get it. Full of life's problems. You're just as full of problems as anybody else, so. To that I say, but God. But God. Amen. My answer to them is, if you only knew. You think I'm a hypocrite now? You should have seen me. You should have seen me then. I was really good at it. I mean, hypocrisy? <laughs> yeah, buddy. You could have only seen who I was. You would appreciate who I am, even though I'm not there yet. God isn't done with me yet. He has assured me of that. Nor is He done with you. Amen. But God. But God. Amen. Well, somebody say, but God. See how easy that is? But God. Well, it is what it is. But God! Well, I'll never get any better. But God! Well, I can't ever. But God! God's at work in your lives. You may not even realize it. But if you have asked Him to, He is involved. But what's our reaction to his involvement? I wasn't even going to hunt that story. On this earth, we are living out God's work, not God. We're living out God's work, which he has given to us, and it becomes our work to do God's work. Huh? That's not messy up. 
but God. His work is being done through us. He loves to accomplish his kingdom work through his kingdom people. And that's y'all. You are it. God wants to move something on this earth. He's going to tell you to move it. Amen? He's done what he needed to do. He sent his son, Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua. He sent him to make a way where there was no way that we could walk in the way that was not there. He made a way. He broke through it all for you and I. And sometimes we need to stop and appreciate it. And remember, who was I? Who am I? Because Christ caused me to be. His work's being done through us. He loves to accomplish it through us. Amen? We still good? Huh? We still good? Wow. Let me read that again from, from the Amplified Version, Ephesians 2, 11 through 12. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles, heathens in the flesh. I was a heathen. I was a heathen, and I was good at it. I kind of figured you all were too. You were Gentiles, heathens in the flesh, called uncircumcision by those who called themselves circumcision, itself being a mere mark in the flesh made by human hands. You gotta, now, now he's talking to them, the Jews, the Gentiles, because at that time that, that, is, that was the uncircumcision and the circumcision. Today we look at it as the saved and the unsaved. Amen? Take a look at that. Remember that you were at one time separated, living apart from Christ, excluded from all part in his hand. Excluded. Utterly estranged. Outlawed from the rights of Israel as a nation. Outlawed from the rights of the kingdom. Outlawed from the rights of the kingdom. We had no kingdom rights. We had a privilege offered to us of coming to salvation. We had no Utterly estranged, outlawed from the rights of Israel as nation. Strangers with no share in the sacred compact of the messianic promise, with no knowledge of or right in God's agreement, his covenant. And you had no hope, no promise. You were in the world without God. Do you remember? In the world without God. But now, God to us. God to us. Now finally, God's work among us. Paul said to what? He said to remember. Amen? He said to remember. Remember what you used to be. You were without hope. You were without hope. Yeah, no. You were without hope. Without Christ. No Messiah. No salvation for you. There, you were without God. We either had no knowledge of God, huh, B.C., before Christ. We either had no knowledge of God or didn't care. That would be one of the two. No knowledge or no care about it. Certainly not much of a future without him. And Paul goes on to say in verse 13 and 14, but now, but now, everybody say now. Now! Yeah! Now in Christ Jesus. Now in Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once so far away, ooh, you who were once so far away, true, bond, in the blood of Christ, have been brought near. Near. You who were once far away, Jack, have been brought 
to me. Who by the blood? For he himself, our peace. You want peace? You're going to find it in Jesus. That's where you're going to find it. You won't find it anywhere else. I don't care if you're looking a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of 7-Up. It ain't in there. No peace or shalom in Christ and Him alone. Christ, our cornerstone. Amen? For He Himself is our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He's made us, both Jew and Gentile, He says, one body and has broken down, destroyed, abolished, the hostile dividing that was between us. I plead with you this morning, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you, would you please consider opening your heart to Him right now? It will make all the difference. I don't promise you. I don't promise you a bed of roses. I don't promise you a thornless life. I do promise you peace. I do promise you hope. I do promise you hope. Because it's his name. Woo! If you don't know Jesus this morning, this is for you. If you know him, this is for you. It's a reminder for us. At one time, you had no God. You had no hope. You had no peace. Paul said, but then Paul said, But God, Paul said that. It's so cool. But God, He's made you one with those who believe in Him. Amen. Let's go to verse 15 and 18. Let's look at this. By abolishing in his own crucified flesh the enmity caused by the law with its decrees and ordinances, which you know, that he from the two might create in himself one new man. One new quality of humanity out of the two, so making peace. And he designed to reconcile to God both Jew and Gentile united in a single body by means of his cross, thereby killing the mutual enmity and bringing the few to an end. And he came and preached the glad tidings of peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For it is through him that we both, whether far off or near, now have an introduction, access, by one Holy Spirit to the Father, so that we're able to approach him. He made a way where there is no way. Can you see this morning God's work among us? Can we see that this morning? Two things. God created a new man and a new body. Some think, well, I don't see it through me. He's not talking about you. He's talking about his body. The body of Christ. Amen. New body. The Jews and the Gentiles hated each other. They hated each other. I mean, if they bumped into each other in the city square, it was like, <laughs> The Jews had to go do a cleansing because they touched the unclean. They hated each other. <coughs> there was no no camaraderie. There was no no love between them for sure. And the Gentiles, they thought the Jews were like a devil or something. They had no love. It was enmity between them. They hated each other. The Jews made a way for them to love each other. Did they all love each other? No, just those who came to Jesus. Just those who came to Jesus. Ooh. 
<coughs> but God, what did he do? He made a way where there was no way. I, I just love that. You gotta remember, we got to look at it. There was no way. Somebody help me here. There was no way. Thank you. He made that way. I love it. We're going to get this. You guys are going to be in Walmart listening to people say, but, but God. I love it. I love it. He made a way where there was no way, carved a pathway in the wilderness through the sacrifice of his son. How much does he love you? Man, I don't know. It can't be measured. But that he does. How do we return that favor? How do we return that love? How do we exist without serving him? What's in the mirror? A servant of God? You know, are, are we takers or are we givers? Who, who, who are we? Do I want it all for me? Am I a taker? I just want to take this, take this, take this. It's all about me. I need this. I need this. I gotta have. I gotta want it. I want it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta want it. I gotta have. I gotta have. I gotta money. I gotta build. I got. I got. I need it. Car broke down. I gotta. I gotta. 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 I gotta. 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 Are we takers or are we givers? Because God says, if you're a giver, I will cause your life to overflow, so that you will have all the more to give. Whether it be time, money, sacrifice, it doesn't matter. God says, if you will, then I will. But I ain't if you ain't. That squirrel will hunt. Jesus Christ, our sacrifice. Yeshua Mashiach, the Messiah. The Messiah. Look up those words, the anointed one. I am made a way for the two to become one. God's work among us. And the world, and, and the word continues on. I, I mean, this thing, I don't know, man. There's just no end to it. There's no end to the word of God. It, it, it doesn't stop here. 66 books, it, it doesn't stop. Here. There's much more. It, this is still being written in your life. The book of Acts didn't quit. We're still acting, hopefully righteously. It's still being written. But God made a way. A new body, a new foundation. We've got a new body, a new foundation built on Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, amen. And, and the building continues to grow. It's of living stones, he said. It's of living stones. There's still people coming to Christ that are being placed into the building. There's no end till he says it's done. It's still open to all. The holy priesthood continues to grow. Living stones being placed as we speak here today. There, there's people in the world receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior right now that are being placed into the body. We grow as we speak. You know, we can't feel it. I've got cells in my body that are reproducing right now. Things being made new. I can't feel it, but it's happening. The body of Christ is growing. We can't feel it, but I know it's happening. I know it's happening. So there it is. God's work for us. God's work in us. God's work through us. And God's work among us. Why did you share all this with us? I'm glad you asked. Because I want us to see that it ain't all over. We're not there. We're not done. It's not over for us. The works of God continue on our behalf this morning. Not only in and of and through and around and among God, God's works are still being accomplished. And there's a blessing in it we have been asked to partake in those We're asked to be a part of this thing. Listen, if, if we can listen closely, we can still hear the, the hammer 
and the chisel on the stone. The edge is being whacked off and still being fitted. Still being fitted. I mean, we've all got those barbs that stick out in places, and the Lord's just saying, nope. Off with that. And bring you to a place. My prayer this morning is that we will consciously praise the works of God on His behalf. This is my prayer. That they'll never stop, but will continue throughout eternity. I mean, bring it on, Jesus. Let's see what you got. I don't know what today holds. Only the moment. I could drop like a rock right now, and it would be fine with me. Sorry, guys. I want to be ready. I, 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 when, when I hear the trumpet and the return of Jesus Christ in the heavens, I want to be doing something that he asked me to do. Wouldn't that be cool? Would that be cool? Anointing a wound, you know, bandaging a lost person. Help, I want, wouldn't it be cool to be caught telling someone about Jesus? And then here, ah! Who? You coming? <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Jew, Gentile, male, female, brother, sister, all of our, in all of our lives, let's let the works of God continue. Don't stop him when he speaks to you and desires of you to, to, to do on his behalf. The answer is yes. Think, well, I don't have time. But God! I don't have the money. But God! I'm not able. But God! But because of God, we can. He's not going to ask you to do something you can't do. If he asks you to do it, he will anoint you to the purpose. If God sends you on the trip, he'll pay for the trip. If it's your trip, it's on you, pal. Why? Because he'll make a way where there is no way. Lord, I don't have the money. I'll make a way where there is no way. Because there was no way, I will make a way. But do we trust him in that? Does our, does our, our walk, our faith show that we trust in, in what we think? Can, can we get this drop down into here where, where it becomes more than an acknowledgement of salvation but becomes salvation itself? That it becomes more than God works on my behalf? When God works on my behalf, Lord, let thy will be done. Lord, let thy will be done. When it becomes real to us and we walk in the realness of it, Lord so desires to use us. June Jen. I'll close with this. I'll close with this. When I look in the mirror, when 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 I see me. I want to think, but God. When I pray to the heavens, I want to think, but God. When I rise in the morning, but God. When I lay down to rest, let me think, but God. As I rest, when problems come my way, but God. I want that to be alive in me, but God. When I walk in victory, but God. When I walk in seemingly defeat, but God. When but God becomes becomes my my emotion, then the world can't throw anything at me. Why? Be but God. When I look at those things going on in my life that seemingly is destroying me, but God. Bring it on, life. Is that all you got? Because I got God. But God, may but God be my report. May but God be my claim. 
may but God praise His holy name. Do you know Him this morning? Do you know God this morning? Because if you don't, I'm asking you this morning to receive Him. To receive Him as Lord and Savior. To receive Him as your future. To receive Him as your purpose, as your hope, as your fullness. To receive Him as your energy. To receive Him as your, as your Master. To Him you bow. To Him you give. And to be the giver, the provider that He's called us to be. Be the healer, not the destroyer. Speak words of health, not of, of healing. Words of victory, not words of defeat. I mean, even my mom told me when I was growing up, watch your mouth. I didn't know what it meant. But I do now because our words are important. Our words give life or they destroy life. It's up to you. You manage your tongue. But God, but God wants you. I tell you that this morning because if He didn't, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. Because my God, my God makes a way where there is no way. Are you ready with that, please? Thank you. My God makes a way. You know, as we go on our way, I want us to allow God to direct us. A ship in the ocean will do nothing but bob around. I don't care what the rudder does. It ain't going nowhere. It's going where the water flows it. Amen? But if the ship is moving, it can be directed. So let's get up our biscuits and get moving. If, if I'm moving, God can say, wait! Or that way. But if I'm standing still, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going wherever the atmosphere pushes me. I'm going wherever my emotions push me. I'm going whatever direction. I can't get there if I'm not moving. So let's be attacked. The works of God and allow Him to make that work. I guess we don't have that, huh? Okay. I'll leave you with this. We sang this morning a song, I Believe. Now we sang it. Do we believe it? It is an admonition of our heart. It is supposed to be what we really do believe. I believe in the blood of Jesus. I believe that that blood has accomplished everything that's called to accomplish. But have I? I've been called to accomplish. You have been called to accomplish. God's done it. God's doing it. And he will continue to do it through you. God loves it and he works to the church. Sing something to me. Come on, girl. Inspire us. If you've in fact made that decision this morning, maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't know the Lord this morning when you got here. But you think now maybe, maybe it's a good time. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you if you're, if you're too scared to come up here, then, then don't. But please see me after after church, because I will be around. I do want to pray for you.
Oh, 